Kyle Delaney here, bringing you the latest edition of my video blog. And in this installment, I like to break down and predict the upcoming fight between Jim Miller and Melvin Gillard. Now, here's the thing about this fight. Both guys are coming off of losses, and at the time, not too long ago, both fighters were considered top contenders in the lightweight division. They were almost seemed like one win away from that title shot to take on Frankie Edgar. So these guys are still at the upper upper part of this very stacked and deep lightweight division. Whoever comes out of this fight, maybe they'll be one fight away from a title shot. So you have Melvin Gillard, pure striker, dynamic striker, deadly hands, and you have Jim Miller, very balanced fighter, great ground game and Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. So it's a very different different style of fighters uh, fight. You have a knockout artist, and that's not take away from Jim Miller striking, and a feared submission guy in the lightweight division. So it'll be interesting to see how this fight pans out at uh, UFC on FX this Friday. So what I'll do, I'll break down the two fighters, then I'll do my prediction. So I'll break down Jim Miller first. Jim Miller is a very balanced fighter for the lightweight division. The guy practices Sambo. That's why his striking is... You could say it's dynamic. He knows how he, he's very good. He throws his hands more. He's not really doesn't throw too many kicks. He has pretty heavy hands too. That's the thing. If you go back and you look at his fight with Bendo Henderson, he was dominating on the feet when the fight was standing, and that's bare, the fight barely took place on their feet. But when they were standing, he showed that he had uh, the superior striking against who is now the top contender in Ben Henderson. But Jim Miller, he has. Three knockouts. He has pretty heavy hands for uh, the lightweight division. He knows his range very well. He has a 71-inch reach, reach. There's no advantage in this. Both him and Gallard are even. But his Sambo allows him to have pretty, dyna pretty dynamic striking. Not as dynamic as Gallard. He knows how to use his hands. He uses his legs occasionally, very rarely. But he's got good hands. Knows his range well. Knows the spacing. Knows his gaps. And he throws pretty good combos. He likes to shoot in and out, but he commits to the pocket. So his striking is pretty good. I'll say that. And Jim, like that adds to Jim Miller's very balanced game. But here's where Jim Miller, he really shines. And it has to show with his record and how he's finished fighters. Jim Miller's wrestling is very superior in this fight. Very superior to Melvin Gillard and to most fighters in the division. Very skilled wrestler. Both Miller brothers are very superior wrestlers. And here's the other thing, his best part of his game, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Very, very skilled submission guy on the ground. He, that's where he finishes most of his fights. He's a black belt in BJJ. He has 11 wins by submission. He's done it in multiple ways, rear naked choke, triangles, you name it. Jim Miller, with his wrestling as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, is able to finish mostly any fight on the ground. And if, even if you look at the Ben Henderson fight, he sunk in some very tight submissions, but only because Ben Henderson is made of elastic. Literally, the guy cannot be submitted. Uh, he's probably the only guy that would have not been submitted by um, Jim Miller's very, very skilled submissions that he, he put on him. So Jim Miller, very skilled. He has the huge, huge grappling advantage in this fight when it goes to the ground. If this fight goes to the ground, Jim Miller will absolutely dominate Melvin Gillard. And I rarely use the word dominate, but Melvin Gillard has been known to not have a very good ground game, even with his judo and now learning to do BJJ. So here's the thing also with Jim Miller. If we're talking about strengths and weaknesses, there's very few weaknesses for Jim Miller in this fight. Jim Miller is a good stand-up guy, but in this fight, he has this, he has a weakness in the striking department. He's not as good of a striker as Melvin Gillard, but I still think he can hang with him in this fight. Regards to strengths with Jim Miller, huge ground advantage, like I said. And here's the thing about Jim Miller. Jim Miller has never been finished. He's got a chin of steel. We're talking about the beating he took from Ben Henderson. He got absolutely destroyed like on the ground with ground and pound. And the guy did not get knocked out. Most people, 99% of the guys would be knocked out. Jim Miller has a chin of steel. He has never been finished before. And here's the th thing. He's lost three times all going to the, to the judges. And let's look at the three guys. Ben Henderson, now the top contender. Gray Maynard, once a top contender. And Frankie Edgar, the, now the lightweight champion of the division. So he's fought top-tier talent. And he has never been finished by top-tier talent. So Jim Miller is a very exceptional fighter in the lightweight division. Very balanced fighter. So that's what I have for Jim Miller. And I'm going to move into Melvin Gillard. Melvin Gillard is an absolutely dynamic and deadly striker on his feet. Between his kickboxing, he, he, the guy is an absolutely dynamic animal on his feet. The guy has, to his credit, he has 20 knockouts on his feet. The guy is a killer. Absolute killer. If he catches you, you are going to sleep. That's the thing. We'll see if Jim Miller's battle-tested chin can handle Melvin Gillard's striking. Melvin Gillard throws hands, throws kicks, knees, 
Um, you name it, anything on his feet, it is possible. He's a very skilled fighter on his feet. His stand-up is his bread and butter. But here's the thing. Melvin Gillard is not a balanced fighter compared to Jim Miller, not even close. When you bring it down to the ground, Melvin Gillard does, does practice judo. He is pretty skilled in judo. Um, but when it gets to the ground, he's just learning BJJ now. He's only a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he's been finished eight times by submission in his career. And it is a big hole in his game, especially in a division where there's a lot of wrestlers, a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys. Yes, he's got great hands, and he can knock out anybody in the division, no doubt about it. He could beat almost anybody on their feet in that division. But if you have a hole in your game that big, I know he's trying to play catch-up and trying to learn the art of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but he is that far behind. It's going to take him a while to really get back on that level with everybody else. He does have his judo. He, has, he does wrestle. But he's not the grappler, he's not the wrestler that Jim Miller is in this fight. But he does have, and we're talking about strengths, we're talking about strengths and weaknesses in this one. Um, his strength, he does have a steel chin. He's never been finished before or knocked out on his feet. Uh, another strength, he is the more dynamic striker. I believe he has a lot more power than Jim Miller. And that's no discredit to Jim Miller's striking at all. Jim Miller does have good striking, but Melvin Gillard has the striking advantage in this fight. If he is successful in this fight, he'll be on his feet. Uh, weaknesses. Plain and simple, he has a huge hole in his game, like I said, in his ground game. He is not the Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner that Jim Miller is. If this fight does get to the ground, he will be, not going to say in over his head, but he will be at a disadvantage because he is not the uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner. He is a blue belt to Jim Miller's black belt, and he will be in quite a bit of trouble with eight submissions, uh, losing eight times by submission in his career. You know, this might just be another one. We lost, saw in his last fight to Lozon, uh, he lost by submission. That was after he got rocked, too. Here's the thing. Uh, another weakness. I mean, Melvin Gillard can fight cocky, and that's not bashing the guy at all. I think Melvin Gillard's a great fighter, but he came out cocky against the Lozon fight. Did not look like he was fighting like a Jackson fighter. Jackson fighters fight very smart, even if they're aggressive guys. Look at Condit in his la um, one of his last fights. He fought patient, then he landed the knee to the head. He didn't come out guns blazing. He, Melvin Gillard tends to get a little ahead of himself. Once again, I'm saying I'm a big fan of the guy, but if he's got to fight smart against Jim Miller, he's got to keep this fight standing. He has to have a game plan in this fight. And a weakness will be if he does come out overconfident or a little cocky, he will be on his back and he will be submitted because Jim Miller does fight smart fights. He takes the fight where he wants. So if Melvin Gillard is smart in this fight and avoids the takedown, he does have pretty good takedown defense. He is a squirmy guy. He avoids the takedown, keeps this fight standing where he is comfortable. He will be successful. But the big weakness is if he does fight overconfident or cocky, he will be on his back and he will be submitted. So that's what I have for the two fighters. In regards to the prediction, this is how I see this one panning out. We will see, these guys will stand, they'll circle, they'll circle each other. We will see strikes. Jim Miller's chin will be tested in this fight. His, um, he's never been knocked out before. We will see exchanges. We will see these two test each other out, learn the range a little bit. I see Melvin Gillard pressing forward a little too much. I see Jim Miller getting him in the clinch, getting him down to the ground. And I see this one ending by submission. I see Jim Miller having his way with Melvin Gillard on the ground. This is the big gap in a ground game that we're seeing with Melvin Gillard. I will see, I'm not going to say this is the first takedown attempt uh, that uh, Jim Miller will get. Jim Miller will have to work for this one. Melvin Gillard, like I said, is a squirmy guy. His takedown defense is pretty good. But Jim Miller will get a hold of Melvin Gillard, and he will get him down to the ground, and he will sink in a choke and win this fight by submission. I'm not going to go into a round. I will just say Jim Miller will win this fight by submission. If you know, if I'm putting a round this one, I'll say Jim Miller, first round submission. If I'm being very specific, I'll say Jim Miller, first round submission, rear naked choke to win this fight. And Melvin Gillard, obviously he's leaving Jackson MMA to go train with the Black Zillions, as they call them, training in Florida. So we will see. Uh, where he lands on his feet there. Not saying that's the particular best move. I think Melvin Gillard's fought very well at Jackson's. So it'll be interesting to see. And obviously Jim Miller, with this win, will move one step closer to a top contender fight. And hopefully if he continues to win, a title shot. Because the guy has only lost three times in the UFC. And he's been always so close. And beating Melvin Gillard will be a big stepping stone for him to get that title shot in the top contender fight. So that's what I have. Jim Miller, submission, first round rear naked choke to beat Melvin Gillard at UFC on FX this Friday. So that's what I have for this edition. This is Kyle Delaney signing off. I'm out of here.